evening. It's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day today. It's a delight to be here. Good to see you. Let's begin our time together with a song, The Fight is On. Let's stand as we sing this, if that's comfortable for you. All right, sing out. The fight is on, the trumpet sound is ringing out, the cry to arms is heard afar and near, the horn of hosts is marching on to victory, the triumph of the Christ will soon appear. The fight is on, O oh Christian soldier, and face to face in stern seated and as you are take your prayer list if you need a prayer list and or a study guide for tonight lift your hand brother Schaffner brother Weddle will see that you get one and uh, we'll look forward to our time and as you enter any further forward farther forward you can sit right here in the center two sections would be great would be great wonderful excellent and uh they don't call me Pester Jake with for nothing. All right, good to see each of you. Still smiling, and uh, I have uh, in your in your prayer list tonight. I want to highlight seven particular prayer requests plus one, and the one is you got to add it in. All right, so Cliff Schaffner, uh, youngest brother of Dennis, is in Good Samaritan Hospital. Very serious complications. Uh, from some surgery and um, um, then uh, Bev Guthrie her feet are swollen legs are still hurting she would uh, I know appreciate your continued prayers she's very grateful for everyone who prays sends a card visits so uh, keep up the good work brother Knezevich before you sit down tell them what you texted me today about Verity The intestinal surgery on Friday and you you said you had 11 people gathered together kind of working on this collective decision so I'll be praying any idea what time on Friday afternoon so jot that down be praying there just pray for some real 
success in ongoing healing. Uh, that's just, just really needed. And then um, I spoke with Curtis. He's back in town and I uh, think he's at the mission tonight, uh, maybe on a rescue, I'm not sure, but um, as they call it. But his grandson is out of ICU and um, actually the last two lines there are updated. Um, He's in great spirits, no more tubes, and is eating and drinking regularly. So that's good news. I asked him about the others. He said, I don't really know. They have a policy in that particular precinct, county, I'm not sure, uh, where they don't share that information. So um, he, he's not sure. Yes. I think there were two ladies, one, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, one was released pretty quickly. Um, so um, anyway, uh, uh, pray for um, um, Ricky. Yeah, keep wanting to call him Jeffrey. Ron Genich, um has had two weeks now of radiation, might be in his third this week, and side effects so far minimal, and uh, just to keep praying for um, help and healing there. Darlene Knudsen is now home, and uh, pray for Angela. She's just carrying a heavy load right in here, um, traveling back and forth, um, taking help take care and teaching and so on. Uh, Brother Dennis Schaffner and I visited uh, Robert Heffler last night in the Veterans Hospital in Vancouver, and the Lord helped us. Uh, they answered the phone on about the third ring. There's a long story to the non-answering phone, but uh, we're grateful for uh, getting in and having a good visit. And he loves visitors. If you're prone, if you're prone to visit him, the best time to catch him is during the day because they'll answer the phone a little more readily. You're kind of at the mercy of shift workers near the phone, I think, at night. So I can tell you kind of what to do, where to go. Uh, so that's, I think, about seven. Okay, the eighth one. Jot down the, the names Chris Weddle and Curtis Bogan. Um, tomorrow at 11 o'clock down at the Oregon State Capitol, building uh, the uh, number of sister churches are spearheading a um, press conference on the steps of the Capitol to draw attention to uh, the fact that 10 state senators have been boycotting the sessions and the reason they're doing that and so which means they don't have a quorum so they can't pass this gender bill that's Awful, terrible, horrible. And of course, Oregon's going to lead the way uh, and all the rotten stuff. Um, so um, th their effort is to bring attention, and two of our men are going to go down and represent us there. If you are able to go, the more the merrier down there. Um, and uh, probably have room for two that could ride with you. What time are you queuing up here? 9.30, yeah, that'll work. So if you can make that see Brother Chris Weddle tonight, and uh, I mean, it, it has to do with, they're kind of putting un, under somewhat of the guise of, uh, we're, we're gonna pay for these surgeries from out of state because other states won't let it happen there. And usually these young, I mean, they're talking about kids coming and and often it is without parental knowledge without parental um, guidance and then they're protecting doctors from uh, lawsuits because there's going to be problems they, these are not natural surgeries so uh, brother Weddle knows even more than I do about this so see him tonight if you have other questions he watched a documentary on that night or two ago about it 
So um, be praying. Pardon me? Yeah, the, yeah. our votes are coming. You know, our election here in Oregon is Tuesday, I think, right? Yeah. So you've got to get your ballots in or drop them off. It might even, I wouldn't even, let's see, tomorrow's Thursday. I wouldn't even put my ballot in the mail from now on. I've had slow mail results. Um, and um, so it's better just to drop them off. Um, I think there's a, a drop-off here at the library right up here at Murray Hill. Uh, they're, they're all over. You just, all the libraries. Okay. So I encourage you to do that. Doesn't take me long to fill out no and all the tax increases. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I mean to say that. <laughs> okay. Um, prayer. That's why we're here. Let's pray as we begin the service. And then we'll divide it into small groups at the end of the service. And don't feel uh, um, awkward about not praying in your group. Just just let somebody know, hey, I'll just pass for now. Sometimes it takes a while to grow into praying out loud in front of people. Usually, um, sometimes couples will pray together, but usually there'll be a men's group, a ladies' group. That makes it a little easier, too. Lord, thank you for this evening. Lord, uh, we, we think of Verity's surgery scheduled here um, uh, uh, Friday, I think it was said, and uh, afternoon, we just pray you'd be with that. Lord, bring real healing to her. May this best be as successful in, in, in every way. And uh, Lord, we, we uh, pray too for the men and, and others uh, that will be down there at Salem tomorrow. Lord, um, how many years ago was it when the um, United States Supreme Court took the wrong position on prayer and Bible reading in our public schools. And now we wonder why there's so, many, so much lawlessness in our world, how we need revival. And Lord, it's, it's, it's the spiritual warfare is intensifying and we, we just need your help. And we need each one of us to do individually what we ought to do. Lord, we, we pray for these uh, requests that we mention by name. And as our prayer groups will mention more in detail, Lord, just be with each one, we pray. Thank you that, Lord, when we pray, you hear and you answer according to your perfect will. Thank you. We can count on that. But you've told us to pray, told us to come to you. Thank you for the service tonight. In Jesus' name. Our next song, How Firm a Foundation, four verses. The first verse uh, is kind of uh, just a, a theme, uh, a statement. But verse two, three, and four, unique to the hymnal. Uh, these are verses as though the Lord is speaking his message to us. So... Take a special look while you're singing at verses 2, 3, and 4. All right, here we go. Let's see.
have some uh, missionary uh, letters to mention here in a minute. Uh, in your prayer list, we are highlighting um, Keith South, missionary to Utah, and the Stones, a missionary to prisons, jails, and um, youth facilities, and they're doing a great job. More on that in a moment. But first, let me just keep encouraging us about our outreach efforts in the various ways in which we do that, and uh, there's many ways. So uh, then, um, Patch, uh, a performance and awards coming up a week from Sunday, and this Sunday, men, is Mother's Day. Hope you got um, your dish towel ready to do dishes for and the oven warmed up, not too much ahead of time. Um, but uh, do something special for her. they work hard. And uh, don't forget grandmothers, too. So. All right. Uh, Rob Watkins is uh, coming just around the corner. Spoke to him recently. He's excited to come. We're excited to have him here and his friends and his wife. Um, he is uh, going to be with us Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. You say, what are all those? Various graduations come to them. It'll be great. K-5 kids, they're cute. They can do no wrong. Teachers worry have themselves half to death. Uh, high schoolers. Uh, the, the, the high school choir is going to sing, and I heard them rehearsing this afternoon, and they're sounding pretty good. I know you're always after more, but um, they're doing, doing well. Then Saturday, we have, um, let's see, did I miss Saturday? Saturday, we have um, a, 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 a children's entire family outreach with um, an inreach. Uh, we're going to meet here. There'll be a, just a number of, of activities. Um, Brother Watkins will do some ventriloquism. He'll bring a Bible message. There'll be some singing. Some, I don't know what all Brother Gru's got cooked up, but it's always good. Then on Sunday, um, he'll be here morning. We have an all church potluck in the afternoon, afternoon service, then at least several to be baptized. Um, if you have yet to see me about that, it's not too late. Then, Father, Son, Camp Out, see Brother Chris Weddle. If you have any questions about that, there's a sign up sheet out there. And those dates are Thursday through Saturday. It's a little bit come as you can. And I try to get up um, each year as I can to the Friday evening, throw every thing in the pot you haven't eaten yet and we'll eat what comes out. No, it's better than that. Uh, Mrs. Burley, don't look like that. It's better than that. Um, so, it's just going, oh. Well, um, uh, I'm just trying to get your attention. All right, all right. Come, it'll be good. Uh, there's a, one of the men will give a testimony. It'll be a devotional. It's always good, always good. I always see deer coming and going. Um, Skunk may wander through the campground sometime. You never know. Um, what else do we have? Strawberry Fellowship. Yes, Father's Day, Sunday evening. That'll be a special time more about that. Um, so I haven't mentioned this in a little while, but the, the NBT followed by the 4th of July. 
And those dates, those times, the date is 4th of July, uh, Tuesday, 10.15 to 2, and uh, then keep in mind the concealed handgun license class coming up. There's a sign-up sheet. Again, if you have questions, see Jonathan Burley about that. And if you don't find him, talk to his wife. If you can't find her, talk to his son. So uh, the Burley family knows what's going on. All right, so keep all that in mind. Then one more. Yes, yes, I'm happy to say we have our own brochure ready for distribution. And uh, uh, don't get me started on this. Okay, don't get started on this. I got to say this. I'm looking at a couple of things. First time we will have ever taken a group to Egypt. We're going to see the largest uh, pyramids in the world. We're going to see the Sphinx. And then something our tour company put in here I didn't know to even ask for. Um, th third day, Monday night, first couple are kind of traveling, getting settled in. Tonight we gather for a Nile River cruise and dinner. And uh, the next day we go to St. Catherine's Monastery where the Ten Commandments, uh, the traditional side of the Ten Commandments, if option, early the next morning, you can have a camel reserved for you. That camel will take you two-thirds of the way up to the top. You say, why two-thirds? I have no idea. That's what they tell me. So I don't know. If you just stand there and look from there, if you climb, I don't know. We'll find out. And of course, the garden tomb, just just a highlight. So um, there are brochures available back there at the Welcome Center as well. Let me go to our missionaries here if I could, and then we'll sing again, and then the message. So from Brother Keith South, and as you know, his wife went on to heaven um, last uh, year, and he is just... Um, back in the saddle, doing the best he can. And um, I, I say that when you, when, anyway, um, pray for him. He's, he's, he's a good man. The uh, title of his newsletter this time is Cold Winter Warm Hearts. title of our newsletters here would be Wet Winter Warm Hearts. <laughs> um, but... Um, they, uh, they have a Camp Utibica 45th anniversary coming up. They have a camp up in the mountains, been up there, it's great. Um, they've got Master's Kids, a youth group they're working on. Of course, the new church building with snow this time is really, really pretty, pretty neat. And uh, so that's from Brother Keith South. Then from um, Brother Stone, um, I'm just going to read um, a sentence and a paragraph. In the month of April, we drove 2,600 miles, held 29 services in five separate prisons, and prayed with nine people to receive Christ. Um, then he also writes, I had the wonderful opportunity to help missionary Rick Terrazas. You've met him. He's been here a time or two over the years. We can't support everybody, but uh, he is getting some support uh, from... Um, folks here. Um, um, anyway, they, they, they co-did an Easter revival at the McLaren Youth Facility. He says, we held five services, saw six uh, young people pray to receive Christ. I was seated next to the unit manager at one of those meetings. During the invitation, I heard him praying. When Rick um, Travis asked for a show of hands as testimony that they had received Christ, the unit man manager boldly raised his hand in front of all the staff and youth he supervises. That's a, that's a, that's a joy. We prayed with an, an additional two inmates in our other facilities to receive Christ. So um, pray for these. We're highlighting two missionaries each Wednesday in our, in our prayer list. Well, let's sing again together. More love to thee. 300, 376 there, as you see in your hymnal, if you need that. <clears throat> All together. to 
Let's sing one more in your hymnal. That's number 423, My Quiet Time. We have two verses here. Let's stand as we sing this together. That's comfortable for you. Please be seated. Thank you. And take your Bible and your Bible study uh, guide that uh, you've received. If somehow we missed you, just lift your hand. Someone will get one to you. And um, time just flies by um, during these studies. So we'll try to uh, kind of cover what we ought to cover tonight. This is part two. Last week, we just got a good start on this. And if you look at your notes, you're going to see our, our, kind of our key verse. How do we fulfill Galatians 6, 9? Let's read that together. It's the top of your study. Many of you haven't memorized. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
And the question, how do we fulfill that verse? There's two parts of it that sometimes we find ourselves in. We find ourselves doing well, good things. My, we're tired, worn out. Um, we've got some college, uh, returning college uh, uh, young people here. They look amazingly alert for having finished a semester because I know, I know good students work hard. And uh, I suspect there are a number of straight A or almost straight A students among this group. And uh, so um, congratulations to you. And if you're a little weary tonight, we understand we are too. So state of mind in which we often find ourselves, weariness, even fainting, sometimes that fainting, you know, in light of the context, in due season, what does that mean? You're waiting, you're kind of, Lord, when's the answer going to come? When's, when, when's the next step of victory? We suggested some reasons as to those things that may make us weary. I suggested three, and then you suggested a handful that I've, I've, I've added into your notes tonight under participants edition slightly edited. And not that you said it wrong, just I didn't always get every word down as I was taking notes, so I made a couple things up. So uh, someone su suggested not getting enough rest. Um, uh, you ask your doctor next time you visit your doctor, how much, how much sleep should a person my age get on the average? They'll, they'll usually have an answer for you because they've studied the studies. And if they don't know, I don't know if you've, you've had this experience, but a doctor I have, I'll ask him a question and he'll go to his Google. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, let's see what the studies say. <laughs> he's quick, man. He's quick. And he's, he's pretty good at that. And uh, sometimes they'll say, well, the studies kind of, you know, it's like take aspirin or you'll die. Don't take aspirin or you'll die. <laughs> you know, they keep changing their mind. But... Um, uh, rest is certainly needful. And then uh, losing sight of end goals was one. Health issues certainly can be draining or other people's health issues. And then um, uh, someone put this, and I thought this is thought provoking because, um, you know, it's easy to overlook this one, not realizing that God wants us to love others. You know? If you were to ask ourselves, does God want us to love people? Yes, yes, but he really wants us to love others and, and, and honor preferring others above ourselves. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 58, keep that in view. We're going to come back to that in, in a little bit. So our text, providing context, had to do with this matter of, of, of sowing and reaping. Verse 8, he that soweth to his Flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So you've got this, this tension between um, serving in the flesh, and we'll define the flesh here in a few minutes. Serving in the spirit, we'll say about that. But again, our, our verse, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, picking up where we left off last, last time. Isaiah 40 27 to 31. Let me ask you to turn there. Oh, um, I have it written in my notes, but I, I, I wanted to keep it to one page, so I, I'm going to make you use your Bible here. So scripture for perspective. And what's the question before us? How do we fulfill? In other words, how do we not let ourselves become weary in well-doing? That's kind of the, the idea of the study tonight. Let's read verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Okay, that's a question. Put that question in your own words. I'm going to get you to help me tonight again. How, how to, and say it loudly if you would. How do I put that question in my own words? Or a statement. I'll give the statement. You say the question. Lord, why have you forgotten me? It seems like you've forgotten me. 
in your words. Where is God in all of this? Okay, that's a good synonym type of question. Someone else? Yes. One more time. Yeah, why doesn't anything make sense? I just seem so senseless. What's going on? Yeah, okay. Let's read on. Verse 28. Hast thou not known? Keep that question in mind. Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is worry? And you go, duh. Yes. Why don't we act like it sometimes? You know, why don't we believe it? There is no searching of his understanding. There's no end of the, the, the idea there is. There's no end to all that he knows and understands. And Romans 8, 28's got to enter into this too. And uh, then, verses 29 through 31, keep, keep in mind, God is infinite in strength. He giveth power to the faint. Sometimes you can feel faint for medical reasons. Sometimes you can feel faint, you're just drained. Sometimes you're not hydrated enough. Sometimes you, you need to eat a little bit. Sometimes you just need to ca catch a little nap. Um, faintness. Sometimes there's a burden you're carrying that just does never seem to go away. Read on. He, God, giveth power to the faint, to them that have no might. Ever get to that point? Man, I'm just into my rope. I don't want to be. I can't be. Um, but he increaseth the strength. And then, it, believe it or not, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. One of my favorite activities over the years here at Westgate Baptist Church is the Mount St. Helens climb. I love to see teenagers tired at the end of the day and we pretend we're not. 5,000 foot of altitude change, 10 miles, grim, grueling, non-technical. It's good to get weary. It's good to get refreshed. So our refreshment is to stop at Burgerville. <laughs> it's gotten expensive. Read on. Even the youth shall faint be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. We've had a person or two over the years get altitude sickness up there. It's real. No amount of willpower can pull you through that. And uh, uh, even young men will fall. But, now there's, it's not just physical, it's spiritual physiological they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint this matter of waiting upon the lord how do we wait upon the lord we're going to come to that again in a minute let's look at five helps to fulfilling galatians 6 9 uh, 9 i call it solutions there just to make the s's keep flowing but um number one is seems simple keep your eyes on jesus example turn to hebrews 12 1 through 4 if you would hebrews 12 1 through 4 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about was a great cloud of witnesses heavenly witnesses god himself angelic beings departed saints let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does those so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, here it is, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. Okay, what do we look at? Look at his example. Read on. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. He didn't let the fact that they were shaming him for no reason. They were calling him illegitimate. They were uh, claiming he blasphemed. And, um, 
and he was um, uh, deceiving the people. Well, he, he, he didn't let the, their shame of him get, him get him sidetracked. Look at verse 3. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Sinners needing a Savior, he came, the majority of them rejected him. That's the contradiction. They're lost. He's providing salvation, and they, uh, they don't receive what they need. Read on. Um, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. There it is again. But then verse 4, remember, you have not re yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. A few of our brethren in the world have. In fact, I would believe at this very moment there are some Christians in prison in certain parts of the world simply because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And here we are. Wow. No, don't get down on the fact that God's given this, but let's use it, maximize it. We've not, most of us have not yet resisted them to blood. Number two, wait upon the Lord. And this is, I mentioned a minute ago, what is it to wait upon the Lord and, and for God to work? There's some aspects of waiting. How do I do that? What is it? Help me. Scripture says, my soul, you're, you got to have a talk with yourself once in a while. Uh, soul, wait upon the Lord for my expectations from him. Call out to him. Yeah, that's part of waiting. Yeah, Lord, help. One time, I, I, was, I was in the agony of soul, and I was crying out to the Lord, and my wife said, be careful praying like that in public. Neighbors may think, may misunderstand. Oh, wow, yeah, I've got to be careful. Yes. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, part of us, and it's not all wrong, uh, likes to control things, plan things, uh, work things out, but a lot of times circumstances, God allows things to interrupt us, distract us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on to that. That's number five. That's very good, very good. That's, and that's part of waiting upon the Lord for sure. Let's, let's move on. Three, keep your eyes upon him and rest in the truths of eternity future. Uh, turn, if you would, 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to skim because of time through verses 51 to 57. But here's verse 58. Someone had this um, as one of the responses as to what makes us weary. Not keeping... 1 Corinthians 15, 58 in view. So the reason I back up to verse 51 is the context of verses 51 to 57 is dealing with what salvation did in eternity for, with regard to eternity and what we can look forward to throughout eternity. So the, the, the context has to do with eternity. I mean, verse 53, this corruptible shall put on incorruption, so on and so forth. Verse 55, O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? Um, and then verse 58, so in light of verse 57, God giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. Have you come to realize you can't do it all? I was agonizing a bit this morning. I really felt like we needed to be supporting this, this press conference down there. And my schedule tomorrow, I just cannot do it. I just cannot do it. So I, I called a few phone calls. The result of it all was there are two, two of our fellows could. And I'm grateful for that. That's where we work together. Uh, and sometimes it's us stepping in for someone else. Sometimes they step in for us. And together it's us stepping in for the Lord. 
So, um, each of us, though, in our own arena, what, what, whatever it's supposed to, we're supposed to do, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And then this phrase, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Number four, don't serve in the energy of the flesh. What's the flesh? You, <laughs> ourselves, me, okay, good. It's our, okay, so spiritually the flesh our old, is our old nature and its desires, its old nature desires. Um, yes. Yeah. Self-reliance shown by prayerlessness and Bible-lessness. Yeah. So don't serve in the energy of the flesh, but in the energy of the spirit. Now here's our position, Romans 8, 9. Ye, Paul's writing to the believers at Romans, ye are not in the flesh. I mean, you're, you're not unsaved now. You've got a new nature. You're in the spirit. If so, be it that the spirit of God dwell in you. you know, make sure you're saved. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that's, that's laid out. That's the foundation. So then a couple of things about this warfare between the old nature and the new nature. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. That's Matthew 26, 41. John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth. When God prompts us about something, okay, Lord, uh, when, uh, how, what degree, um, alone, with someone, whatever it, the case may be. The flesh profiteth nothing. And I, I kind of wrote in my notes what you had just said. Self-effort doesn't go far, if uh, anywhere at all. So the flesh profit, profit, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, a couple of things about the flesh and the spirit. Romans 8.13 says, mortify the deeds of the flesh. Synonym for mortify. Kill it. Put it to death. Don't give it life. Don't resurrect it when it's on life support. Don't feed it. Make no provision for the flesh. Yeah, but I'm strong. I just kind of think it might be kind of fun to just kind of see how it is. Don't start down that road. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 1, cleanse, uh, we are to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Have you found yourselves disgusted by things that didn't used to disgust you? That's called spiritual growth. Maybe, maybe your music has changed over the years. You've heard my testimony. I, I got to be careful. You know, Safeway music used to be safe. <laughs> kind of melodic. And, and uh, boy, it, it isn't always that way anymore. I'm not just picking on Safeway. I'm just saying, you know. Um, there are some restaurants I don't, I don't like to go to, even if somebody's paying. It's jarring. It's, I, I, I don't, I, I can't handle that anymore. I don't even like it. It's not restful. And if I walk into a place that's semi that way, I'll say to the waitress, do you have a quiet corner? And if it doesn't turn out to be a quiet corner, I'll ask them. All they, all they can do is say no. Say, hey, would you mind turning down the music a little bit? Make no provision for the flesh. Mortify the deeds cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and uh, of the flesh. Okay, let me go to the fifth and last one. And I, I wish I had time to have us look at the marks of the flesh and the spirit. It's quite an ugly list for the flesh. It's a beautiful list of nine for the spirit. I wonder if there's a song about the fruit of the spirit. Does anybody know you musicians? Is there a 
children's song, does it list all nine qualities? I'd love to hear that. Probably know it if I heard it, but okay. Somebody ought to sing it. Somebody ought to. Anyone like to volunteer? S who used to? Mrs. Hotemio. You have been volunteered. Well, good for you. There's two young ladies sitting right in front of you that can, that can take on that project. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So you saw a picture just before we sang that last song. You're going to see it again here. Can you pull down the lights a little bit on the, on the picture there? Okay, other than Andy Knezovich, anyone know where that picture is of? Sound booth, you can't answer this either. The gorge, you're right. Where in the gorge? I've heard Rooster Rock, I've heard Crown Point. Those are all good answers, but they're wrong. Beacon Rock, yeah. Now, anybody know who took that picture? I don't know. Whose Bible is that? So, um, this area of the gorge, there is a rock called Beacon Rock, and there's a beautiful trail. I think it's 1.1 mile up, and it's not. It's not grim. It does slope. But along the way, and there's a few people that come by, but what a beautiful, the idea is find a quiet place. Spend some time with the Lord. And... Um, what are you doing? You're feeding your soul on the things. See, creation, I mean, where did God start? Creation. And creation speaks of him in so many ways, and it sets the tone and the spirit. And then you get into the Bible, uh, John 15, 3, say it with me. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. Very simple. We need Bible before breakfast. No bread, no breakfast. Excuse me. No Bible, no bread. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> no Bible, no, bre no bread. No Bible, no breakfast. You say, I don't eat breakfast. No Bible, no lunch. Whatever it takes to get you into the Bible. You say, I, I, do, I do my Bible reading at night. No Bible, no sleep. Uh, you know, make it work. We need, now you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. I love 2 Corinthians 4.16 also. It says, for which cause we faint not. Why? The inward man is renewed day by day, every day. Good habits. Okay, we are out of time. Closing question. So, how will it go with us in the days to come? These are five good helps to fulfilling this battle we find ourselves in where we fight weariness in the, in the spirit, in the flesh. And um, sometimes it just goes on and on. Thank the Lord. He has infinite strength. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the truths of your word. Thank you that you want us to feed the new nature. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities to... Um, Invest in others. And uh, Lord be with our prayer time. In Jesus' name, amen. Could, could I close with, with just a thing about families? Family activities are really important. And um, while you still have energy, parents and grandparents, this is a good family activity. We did this once with our family years and years ago. Just, just go out there, climb this little rock and uh, see the view, take some pictures, rest in God's creation. But there's another one I recommend to you, and that is take the road out through um, Gresham up toward government camp. Right before you get to government camp on the right-hand side, there's a place, um, kind of nondescript, it's got a, one of those brown information signs, and you're at the place called 
the chutes, C-H-U-T-E-S, and there were four or five chutes that the wagon trains would rope the wagons down on the Barlow Road, and it is not far off the highway. When you get done walking up and seeing the chutes, and the, and the old road kind of splits, the, the biggest chute, I think it's chute number three, um, if I remember the number, it goes below you and it goes above you. They would rope the wagons down. They'd take the oxen and the horse and down, uh, horses down another trail. 60 degree slope. That's steep. You say, then what do we do? Then you go to the Barlow Inn. And uh, Mrs. Butterfield, your old friend, Susan Rosenbaum, now excellent, who got saved on Easter Sunday, our fourth Easter as a church. She owns that restaurant, and you call her ahead of time and try to make sure she's there. And then tip well, tip well. That's, that's the reason she came to church and got saved. But that's a, a wonderful activity. And, um, uh, and there's all kinds of them out there. The Terrells, the Knezeviches, the, the Burleys, the, everybody. You've got your own ideas that work well, so share. Let's go to prayer. Mm -hmm.